Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining. So today on the bench I have a Thorns TD-160B Mark II. You now this was brought to me by a client. He says it has two problems. One, there's a channel missing on uh, either the left or right. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, second, the motor makes a thumping or banging noise. And uh, now he sent, he shipped this turntable um, to Montreal to get it looked at and repaired at a facility or some shop and they sent it back said it was unfixable they couldn't find parts or I don't know what their excuse was but uh, they didn't they didn't end up fixing it for the gentleman they just sent it back and said we can't help you so he brought it to me as kind of like a last ditch effort to see what we can do for this I, I, I don't know I told him I don't have much hope for it if somebody from a shop shuts it down and says no plug it in and uh, I says I didn't I didn't have much hope for this one so the motors turning at 33 and I don't hear anything Try 45. I still don't hear anything. Let's just have a look inside. But then once it gets up to speed, it's quiet. That's at 45, let's shut it down, try 33. I'm not seeing anything here. Let's take off the platter, it's quite heavy. Let's have a look at this mechanism. Okay, let's try 33. Oh, look at the wobble in that. Why is it wobbling so bad? the bearing worn out or is it bent shaft okay let's uh, let's pull this belt off I can hear it. Okay, it is making a knocking noise. I think it's just a worn out bearing. To tell you the truth, I think this bearing is knackered. I bet you if I put a drop of oil on it, it would shut up. But that doesn't fix it though. Wow. Okay, I hope you can see this. I got, uh, I'll turn the lights off. Maybe that'll help you. Maybe not. I don't know. So I set up a dial indicator here just to check this motor shaft. And I think it's bent. And I think uh, this will tell us one way or the other if it is or not something's not right here so uh, let's give it a spin and it looks like we are out by four 
four thousandths of an inch. You can see that there as I rotate it. So that's not good. Not good for a turntable motor because it'll f uh, provide flutter. And that's on the 45 spindle. Let me take off the uh, let me take off the pulley and see if that shaft is bent. I think the shaft is bent. What do I need here for? I think I need like a small hex key. So we got springs and all kinds of stuff going on in here. Let me move this aside here for now. What do we got? We got looks like a clutch. I'm looking at this here. It looks like there's some wear in the inside. Okay. Spring, bottom portion. This thing might be just worn out. And what's on the bottom here? A felt pad and that's glued in place. Definitely have a bent shaft. That's not that far. That's all about two thousandths. If I go up the, uh, let's measure up here. If I can get this centered. There we go. Yeah, we're getting two thousandths. And a noisy motor. So let's pull that motor out and see what we can do for it. So I got the four motor wires disconnected. Uh, this looks like there's two coils, one red and one blue. And uh, pretty simple. Okay, well, I just want to check the, um, the signal leads here since I got it open. He says we have one dead channel, so let's check this out. Uh, ohms mode, check for shorts, it's open, and that's open, okay, checking for grounds, let's go to continuity, that's working, that's working, let's go for the center connector on the left channel, that's working, the right channel, somebody put duct tape on here as a electrical insulator, Get rid of that. Okay, center conductor right channel. Okay, those are all working. So if we have a problem, it's between here and the cartridge. So let's check the cartridge while we're at it. I'm just going to check for resistance between the windings. Whole bunch of nothing here. Maybe the cartridge is bad. I'm getting mega ohms. Okay, there's 1.1k. And 1.1k. So the cartridge is good. It's out of place. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, here we are, motor's out. Now, it's got some permanent magnets inside because I short these wires together. They're really difficult to turn. But when I let them go, it free wheels. Yeah. Now, there was a lot of crud in behind this bearing. You can't see it, but I can. It's I was picking out big gobs of lint and fuzz. I guess it just gets attracted in there. And just trying to clean it out. But we need to deal with this motor. This motor shaft is bent. Uh, not very much. It's out by a thousandth of an inch which deflects two one thousandths of an inch on my dial gauge. Now, I want to take this motor apart to service the bearings. I want to actually, first I want to check to see if this bearing is worn out. And I want to see if there's any play, side to side play, in, the, in, its, uh, in its shaft. But if that's the case, I was thinking maybe I could swap bearings from this side to this side. And uh, this one's in good condition. We could put that one up top. That's going to be, this is the one that gets all the pull from the belt. And uh, this is the one that gets all the wear. This one here just, uh, just stabilizes it. Now I can, I can disassemble the motor. I can drill out these three rivets and pop these three standoffs off and then it'll just come apart but how do you put it back together again now they do provide these nice little ears with the holes in them I can put screws and nuts and washers and uh, put it all back together that way so maybe we'll do that I'd have to pull off this brass uh, well it's actually a clutch plate it's got this clutch felt on it and it's dirty too it's got all kinds of lint and stuff stuck to it. But I think first step is to try and straighten the shaft. And if we can't straighten it then we're out of luck. Okay, so I got some uh, went to the garage, got some tools here just to help me out with the diagnosis of this motor. Um, now, we have two problems here that I can see. One is we have a bent shaft because when I rotate this motor, you can see for yourself how that is deflecting. And we're getting about two thousandths of an inch in movement on that shaft. Now, this is exaggerated because the shaft is, I'm measuring about three quarters of an inch up from the bearing, but the shaft is definitely bent. And we can we can straighten that. That's not a problem. We can we can fine tune that back down to zero or close to zero. Uh, we have another problem though that the bearing this bearing here is I think is worn out, and you can see by the play. If I push on this, you're getting play in the shaft uh, bearing, and that's where our knocking noise is coming from. So. What do we do about this? Well, obviously we could just replace the motor. But then I did look on eBay and uh, I didn't look too hard. But you can buy used motors on eBay and you're probably looking at about $100 plus, including shipping or shipping on top of that. So uh, not a very good option because you don't know the condition of the motor you're going to get. Um, this is an AC synchronous motor that runs off two, two uh, actually I think it's you're able to wire this um, 120 or 220, 240 and this is actually says it's a 50 hertz motor but we're running it on 60 hertz which shouldn't hurt it but uh, as you can see we have this motor has problems it's it's worn out so the bearing problem what do we do about the bearing problem so I actually have an assortment of used bearings that I, these are from poles from motors uh, these are two millimeter shaft diameter. This is a sintered, looks like a sintered brass or sintered bronze. And this is a brass sleeve, or bronze sleeve, bearings. 
and uh, we could retrofit one of these to work in this application. We have a number of them to choose from. Um, I would like to get, I don't have any in two millimeter shaft, uh, but a ball bearing would be ideal. I'd like to get that in there and then that would be uh, the end of the story of any motor noise, any pretty much last forever. All right, so here's an example of some ball bearings that we could get that would work in this application. Um, we got two millimeter shaft, that's what we're looking for. And outside diameter, uh, let's see, for housing inside diameter, five or six millimeters, we have a choice. Now these are little tiny ball bearings. Uh, here's another one, precision stainless steel ball bearing. Uh, I don't know if these are open, these are open bearings. We don't want open because we don't want dirt and dust getting in. So we're pretty much limited to these two choices. We got a two millimeter shaft, five millimeter housing ID. And uh, these bearings are lubricated and uh, they're actually not bad. They're running around $7 a piece, $7.20. And these can get, you can get these from a McMaster car. Uh, this would be the ideal situation is you drill out the original bearing to fit this bearing and you'd press this in and then uh, Bob's your uncle. And uh, you would actually be upgrading the motor from a sleeve bearing to a ball bearing. And uh, it would run smoother, quieter, less friction, all that, all that jazz. So that's one option. Okay, before I tear into this motor, I wanna make sure I have everything I need. Now these standoffs, I'm gonna be drilling them out. So they're gonna be pretty much useless after I'm done. I don't, I don't think drilling them out for taps is a good idea when I can just go to the shelf and pull off a standoff and use that instead. So this here is, uh, let's see, the battery in this thing is, let's zero this out. Okay, so these standoffs are probably, how long are they? 16.75 maybe? Does that look about right? Okay, let's lock this. Now I selected two different types here. They're both basically the same thing. They have, they both have M3 threads. This one here is slightly longer by about, well, let's see, 1675. And what do we got here? We got 720. So it's half a millimeter longer. Now there's lots of meat on here. I can take half a millimeter off this side and it would make no difference to the threads and uh, it would be the exact length. These ones here, I wouldn't need to modify at all, but they are 1606, about half a millimeter short, but I could use a washer to make up that difference. So I can go either way. I think I'll go with the thicker ones and uh, we'll put these ones back and use them another day. But this is, I'm gonna clean these up, I'm gonna probably remove a little bit of material here on the ends just to uh, clean it up so it's I'll make sure they're all the same length too or no we have a problem that's right we had this thing in that way and this was a motor adjustment screw so one of these is going to be shorter than the other that's right I didn't realize that I have to look at this again because uh, these are all the same length. They're all the same length, but we have this adjustment screw on one of them. Let me look at the base. Okay, now that I look at this, it might not work. So, for example, if I put these on here like this, and I put a screw in from here, that's long enough to penetrate, probably about 10 millimeters long. That'll work for holding that standoff onto the motor and clamping the motor back together. But I have a female thread here and a male thread here, and this post needs a female thread. Now, um, what I should do is find one standoff that has female on both ends, and then I can use that for the post. And then I can use these other standoffs for the other two. And uh, this would stick up through the, the base of the table and you just put a nut on it 
Uh, yeah, I'll figure something out. I think I have some standoffs that are, uh, let's see here. I got some brass ones. For example, this here, I got a brass one, but it is not long enough. It is quite a bit shorter. Uh, let's see, find something more suitable. I do have long ones, but they are not drilled all the way through. Hmm. Okay, let me think about that one. I'll have to keep that into consideration. But I think we're okay to take this motor apart. I'm just going to mark it. The end caps look identical. So I'll have to mark one from the other, just so they don't get mixed up. And then uh, let's put a mark here. Just our reference mark so that when we disassemble it, we have something to go by there. And that's our reference mark. Because we've got four laminations here. we got two outside ones and two in the middle. So I can drill these out now and uh, actually first let's do this. Let's remove this felt pad. What is this crap on my... Let's remove this felt pad. I need to remove this brass collar. It looks like it was just glued on loosely. Okay, I'll put that aside. We'll have to glue that back on. Clean this off. The old adhesive. Gonna need to remove this collar. First let's measure where it is. Uh, let's put it on here and measure the length of this. So right there is so 19.7. Okay, that's for future reference. Alright, so you can see the play, or actually the bend in the shaft as I rotate it, and then if I wiggle the collar here, you can see there's play in the bearing. Now, this is the direction of the belt pull, so towards the right, so the bearing wear is going to be on this right hand side here of this. Uh, but let's focus on the the straightness of the shaft. So what I want to do is I want to pinpoint so this part here is closest let's see I'm going to try and get this fairly close. Let's mark this. So this little spot here is is where it's bent. So we need to bend it back to the left. If I spin this around the other way, let's see, the opposite end of the shaft is the low point. Okay, so let's try and bend this. I'm just going to use a pair of pliers, or crescent wrench, and we want to, let's see, which way do we want to go with this? Yeah, we want to go this way. Okay, so let's back this off just give it a little nudge I don't get too carried away let's see how that did it's re reduced it quite a bit we're down to less than a thousand so are we still Our high spot is still marked by the green dot. 
Let's give it another nudge. Let's go here and give it another nudge. So green dots to the left. Let's nudge this to the right. Let's see how this does. We're almost there. It's getting better. I say I don't see much movement. We're still getting bearing play. Let's see if it. Uh, let's try and find a peak here. Yeah, I think we're still a little bit. It's much improved. Needs a little nudge more. Tighten this up. Oops. Let's give it another nudge. Oh, I went way too far, maybe. It's worse now. What did I do? That's still the high spot. It needs to go more. This thing's also exerting a force on the shaft too. And it's not. Okay, let's try this. Maybe I got too much force on here. Let me reset the dial indicator so it's not putting so much force on. Because as the spring winds up, it it creates more and more tension. All right, I think I got this dialed in. Not too bad. Let's have a look here. So actually, it's moving less than. Okay, where's my spot? Find the high spot here. Let's see. Right here somewhere. So let's put a new mark. It's hard to, the bearings moving around. You can see the movement between the, let me try and find the high mark again. And high is that way, okay. So right about here is the high mark. Put a mark here. Let's turn this around and let's try one more time. Let's get it, let's try and get it bang on. Uh, motor's moving. Let's try this. Let's go this way. I can't see what I'm doing. We have a different high mark now. Our high mark is now, let me clean this one off. Okay, where's our high mark?
right where our old one was. Let's try this. Looks pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's try removing this collar and heat it up. Hopefully we can get it to expand enough. There it goes. gripping again. Let's try this again. Get it good and hot. There it goes. Come on, baby. There we did it. Let that cool off. All right, next steps. Before I open this motor up, I'm going to mark the bearing caps. This is the bottom. And this one is the top. I might be swapping these, I'm not sure. And uh, let's mark these coils too as top. it here somewhere top okay now we should be able to just separate this let's drill this out You know, before I open this up, let me get rid of these filings here. This is not good to have around when you're opening a motor up. Let me clean this up. All right. All right. Let's remove this. And there's our top bearing. What do we got here? This is grease. I 
looks like we have a bearing sleeve in there. interesting okay so it does have a replaceable bearing sleeve but I probably don't have the right one this is okay let's uh, look at the rest of this let's pull the bottom off let's have a look at this bearing this one has a washer the other one had a washer too. It had a plastic washer on the bottom and a steel washer on top. And that was on the shaft. So that goes like, goes like this. Or maybe it's just a one washer. Yeah, it is just one washer. This side has it. Okay. Lubricated with some kind of grease. So I want to check the shaft if it's worn here. Let me do that right now. First of all, what do we got up here? We have 196. The shaft looks good. So my plan is just to swap these two end caps and use, uh, this was the top bearing, and now use this one as the top bearing and use this one as the bottom. That should eliminate a lot of the play in the, uh, in the motor itself. Now my question is, are these identical? Because I think they are identical, and I think they will work independent of where they're located. Here's the two coils. These are uh, 110 volt. Can you read that? 110 volt, that's 50 hertz. But they are run at 60 hertz. It doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, we're gonna leave this alone. This is going to be our top bearing, the one that I marked bottom. This is going to be our bottom bearing, the one that was the top bearing. And we're going to put it all back together and see how much play we have. Okay. Let's use three and one. Three and one. And we are going to put a very small drop in here. And then we get a shaft. Our bearing washers are on there, so it's all good. And then we can assemble. So let's assemble this back up.
Okay. This needs to be aligned because if it's not aligned, it's going to drag. And okay, so I'll do that. What I'm going to do is get three screws, three um, three nuts on these outside holes. I'm going to uh, do the alignment and uh, put the motor back together. Now, if these bearings are really bad and worn out, they could be replaced. Um, this uh, bearing sleeve here, it's it's a bushing actually, and it could be pulled out and replaced. And if you have the ability, you could take uh, machine this out to four millimeters or five millimeters, whatever this is, and just press that in, and then you would have an instant upgrade to bolt bearings instead of sleeve bearings. Um, I'm not going to do it in, that, in this case. I'm just going to flip the end caps over and we're going to see how it performs. I think there's still life left in this motor if we just uh, swap the bearings around and give them uh, a different duty. So let's put this together. I've got this all here. Put this all together. Can't get it in a hole. Okay, there we go. And uh, I have some screws here that I'm going to use. Oh, I need th three washers. I only picked out two washers and I need three. I don't know what was I thinking. Now these uh, these uh, screws and bolts I'm putting in here they're just temporary. I can leave them in place or I can remove them uh, once I get the standoffs back in place. So we're just going to assemble this loosely. And we are going to try and align the motor here. So I have my 5.5 millimeter socket and that's for these nuts. So let's snug these down just a little. And I'll spin the motor. Feels good. It's not dragging anywhere. Okay. So I'll, I'll continue assembling this. And uh, then we'll do some tests on it to see how... how that, it feels a lot better actually. This bearing shouldn't have any wear on it because it was on the back side. And then what we did was we just flipped them over. Okay, I think this is good. So let's torque these down. Tighten them up really good, and uh, then we'll reinstall them. Actually, let's, we'll test the motor first. Tighten this one up, and then the last one. Okay, those are good and tight. Motor's spinning free. Okay, we could heat up that collar and put that back on. I could push it on cold, but I don't like doing that. I'd rather heat this up first, expand it, and then put it on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something, lay something down here so that it can't go too far down. Uh, you can see the wear marks. Well, not the wear marks, but the marks it left behind. Right here, between here and here, it's clean. And then the shaft is kind of oxidized here beyond. So we'll uh, put that back on where it belongs. And then we'll test it again. What I'm going to do is just going to use these two sticks. They're just the right diameter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue them temporarily just to the body of the... just to hold them in place so they don't fall out. And that'll be my spacing for the collar I'm putting on. Let's 
Put a little dab there. Just hold it. Okay. Get rid of the glue gun. Okay. Let's heat this up. Get it good and hot. Okay, I think that should be good. And just drop this on. Let's check our dimensions. We had before it's 19 point something. What do we got now? We got 19.4. I'll have to go back and review the videotape because I think it's pretty pretty close. Just remove this. Let that cool. Okay, we are back and I'm just testing the the shaft straightness seems okay. It's got a little bit of a little bit of a deviation there. Probably about half a foul. I could actually try tweaking that a little bit. I might just give it a little shot here just to see if we can get that closer to zero. Very, very, very thin shaft. You got to be careful with it. That's a lot better. Barely moving at all now. So let's reinstall this motor and see how it works. All right, now that we got the motor sorted, let's uh, set up the tone arm so we can do some tests here. I don't know if it's set up. It's set for half a gram. I don't think that's right. Let's test this before I get too carried away here. Let's do this. And you can see that? Yeah, I hope so. Let's try this out. It's uh, just under, okay, let's go to zero. And that should put me at zero. Doesn't want to say stay. Yeah, we got about a tenth of a gram. Let's turn this down a little bit more. Get this set for zero. Okay, I think that's going to do it. It's floating right now. So we'll set this to zero. And let's turn this up to one gram. One gram. Let's see what we got. 0.8. Okay, a little bit out. Let's go up to 1.25 grams. Okay, we're just over one gram. Let's leave it there. Uh, okay, let's set this also for one gram. Skating. Okay, let's get an album on here see what it sounds like. Okay, so one of the complaints was it had a dead channel, so let's listen to this album and see what we get out of it. Let's turn the power on. And we got both channels working. Okay, that is working both channels. Sounds terrible though, but I don't know if that's my phono amplifier that sounds so horrible or if that's the cartridge. Mm -hmm. 
Doesn't sound like it's tracking properly. It might have a damaged stylus. Let me have a look at the stylus. All right, let's have a look at this stylus. It looks kind of dirty. You see it there, there's a point. Let me clean that up a bit. It's a little, a little dusty and dirty. Let's, let's get some alcohol on it. Now, from what I understand, I don't know if you're not supposed to use alcohol on some of these styluses because uh, it might absorb uh, or might destroy the glue, but I don't think this is the case here. I just want to clean the tip. That yeah, looks a lot better. Let's have a look at the side view. Let's get a focus on this. Looks like we got a conical tip. Looks conical to me. It's hard to say. That stylus looks okay. It doesn't see any chips or any heavy wear. It looks pretty good. Okay, let's look at the other side. Yeah, that stylus looks fine. All right, let's put it back on. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that head, uh, that cartridge, it's cocked, eye, it's cock eyed to the right here, and it's got like a twist to it, and it's not sitting perpendicular to the album. I don't know if that's something with the head shell, or if that's something with the mounting, or the tone arm itself, but I need to think I need to correct that. That doesn't look right. Now that, if you have your cartridge sitting on an angle like this, um, you'll get one channel that's higher in volume than the other that's my assumption you know, it doesn't look right but let me have a look at this cartridge i don't know if it's been set up properly i don't know anything about it but we are getting both channels i'm happy about that um can't really tell the quality because i'm using in my realistic sa155 integrated stereo amp and it's got a really horrible phono stage in it it's just enough for testing that's all it's for so i'll have to get a decent uh, phono amplifier connected so we can actually hear what it sounds like but i'm gonna take a look at that uh, head shell see if something's bent or twisted okay i think i just found the problem if you have a look here i'll lift up on the tone arm You can see what the problem is. It's very, very loose, that gimbal bearing. Uh, let's have a zoom in. And here it is. That's not correct. There shouldn't be that much play in the bearing assembly. So it slops around like that. It should hold it steady and uh, be very low friction at the same time so we might have to go in there and adjust those two or just one of them anyway that's really horrible all right you can see all the play oh you can't probably can't see it from your angle but all the play in that gimbal assembly it's flopping around so i just want to check these adjustment screws tight that one's tight and let's uh, these uh these are lock screws or lock nuts on the outside and you just unlock them by giving them a... oh you need a stronger somebody must have really torqued on this let's see what I got here let's crack this one free Let's crack this one free. OK, 
Okay, so those lock nuts are loose now. And turn our adjustments. Oops. Doesn't want it. There, no. Let me take this out. This adjustment is frozen in the uh, lock. Let's turn this. I don't think this. Oh, it's frozen. I don't think anybody's ever set this turntable up properly. Okay, let me unfreeze that one. What's the other one like? Is it frozen too? Somebody put. Let me remove this cartridge before I damage something. Okay. Is this one locked as well? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take both these out. And you should be able to see little ball bearings in there. I don't know, you can see the ball bearings. Let me zoom in. You see those ball bearings? Okay, that's got to ride on the needle, but that has to be adjusted perfectly so that there's no backlash, no play. And I can't adjust it right now because this adjustment screw is locked in the in the in the lock nut. So, okay, they're using some kind of thread locker on this, so that's I had to get quite a bit of torque on there to get it to break free but now it's free so the inside you see how the inside adjustment uh, screw now turns independent of the outside that's what we want because we want to adjust the inside and then we lock it with the outside this one's still frozen you could either I might just hit it with some heat hit it with heat and then it will break that uh, break down that thread locker it's just heated up really good Should be all right. Let's try that. Let's try this. Yeah, see, there it's turning free now. Okay, so we can put this back together. Let's let that cool off. It's good too. Now since we got the gimbal disassembled, I take the opportunity and clean everything here. I can get in here with some Q-tips and clean everything up, make it all look good. Uh, just going to be careful of these fine wires. It's pretty, pretty dusty looking. So I'll clean all this up and then we'll get to the adjustments. So I just discovered another problem here. This end is loose. You see that? So that red line should be facing up. And there's a little rubber bumper that phases down. This is for the counterweight. Now that should be tight. So let's, there's a screw in the end here. Just, the screw must be loose. Oh, it's tight. Why is it rotating like that? It shouldn't rotate. Let me pull this out. Oh, it is tight. Just hoping it's not broken or something. You use they use thread locker on everything here. Pull this out. That is tight. I keep going. Yeah, you know, I think that just needs to be tightened down more. The thread locker is what threw me. Let's tighten this down. Okay. Let's line this up. And tighten it down. Now, at least it won't spin around. The line should be facing up so you can see it. Uh, okay, so let me... Yeah, that's better. 
Okay, let's try this. Got it cleaned up. Here's our tone arm. Put it into position. Now let's get one, one pivot here on this side. Okay, let's screw this one in. Funny to have a Japanese tone arm on a German turntable. Okay, tonk that one in. Let's get the other one. Oh boy, play tough. Gonna get it started and then I can use a screwdriver. There we go. Okay, before get too carried away, let's position this. Tighten up both sides equally, hopefully, and bring those two pivot points in towards the center. Um, I want to get this centered between the yoke here. We have to get it centered this way, otherwise it's going to rub on this side or the other and it's not going to be totally low friction. Just going to get my screwdriver, okay. Bring this in. And bring this in till I start to see it move here, and it's starting to move now, and it's starting to move in, right there. See now I'm I'm hitting this side, but I'm gonna back it off about halfway, right about there. Let's tighten this side down. And we'll get this side looking good too. What's this one's jamming on me? This jam nut is jamming. Back this off some more. Okay. Just keep going until we get all of our play. That's actually not bad right there. It's still loose, but I'm going to Actually lock this side down. I probably need to go more. I'm just uh, trying to get uh, a feel for how these bearings are adjusted. See now there's zero play right now. And I can feel the screw bottoming out on this on the bearing. Back it off a bit, and there is the slightest amount of play. I'm going to leave this one right about here and lock this one. Let's lock this one in place. Okay. There's a little bit of play. I'm going to do this one one more time. Unlock this bearing. Okay, right about here. It's bottoming me out. I'm going to back it off a bit and lock this down. Very slight movement in the bearings. It's a lot better than what it was. It's not slopping around. You can hear a little bit of slop there, but it's a lot better than what it was. Okay, I'm going to leave that. Let's lock these. 
better screwdriver for that. Let's lock this one first. Don't go crazy in the torque. And check, still a little play. It's a lot better. At least the arm won't be sitting sideways like it was before. There's very little play in that bearing now. I could actually play with it and get it perfect, but I think it's going to work good the way it is. It's got a very low friction pivot there now. And I do believe we're centered with um, the side so that we're not rubbing on one side or the other. We got it centered this way. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Okay, back to the weight setting. So we got it zeroed right now. I think if I put this on, you're going to shut off on me, are you? Let's put this on and see if we're zeroed. It's barely touching. Yeah. Alright, so that's zero. Let's give it one gram. And what do we got here now? 0.9 grams. It's not bad. I don't know why it's so far out. Let's give it a tenth of a gram more. Yeah, overshot it a little bit. You get the idea. We're pretty close. And best of all, Torm is stable. It's not rocking around anymore. So let's have another look at it. All right, let's have a look. See how it sits now. Uh, it looks a lot better. It's slightly... Actually, it's a lot better. I think it was slightly bent inwards now. Or tilting uh, inwards, but... That might be a function of the cartridge mounting. But it is a lot better. And that slop and that bearing is gone now, so... All is good. Okay, I'm just going to go through and check the alignment of the cartridge. Now, I don't think it's correct because I can see right here these screws are not um, equal with each other. So, the way this thing works is, this is actually from one of my viewers. Thank you, Mike. This is an um, overhang gauge, or it's a turntable setup gauge. Uh, there's two, two points here. Of interest and this is obviously goes over your spindle um, this one sets up the total arm angle or the cartridge angle you want to line this up with that point on the uh, the crosshairs and then you visually look and see how your cartridge is lined up if it's tilted one way or another you want to bring it back so it's square with those grid lines okay that's the first step and you do that with these two screws. Now the second step is you move it over to the second innermost target and you check it again. And if your cartridge is out one way or the other, then you need to reset the overhang. And the overhang is the distance from the pivot point of the back of the tone arm to the stylus. And what you want to do is you want to move both screws back or forward, back, yeah, forward or backwards until that cartridge squares up with those grid lines. So let's, uh, I really can't do this with a camera in my way because my head needs to be where your camera is right now. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably try this one first. Let's just get a screwdriver here and see if we can loosen this off. I can't really see what's straight and what's not. It doesn't look very straight to me. Looks like it's off quite a bit. It's cockeyed this way. So let's uh, loosen this screw off. Hope you can see what I'm doing. No, you can't. Let's loosen this screw off. And I'm going to straighten the cartridge out to right about there. 
tighten it down a little bit. Not too hard. We just want to keep it from moving. And let's recheck our alignment. Now that is way off now. It looks like it was actually... Let's move this one in more. Well, that one was loose. Uh, let me let me stop camera and let me check the alignment. All right, I think I got it not too bad there. It seems to be lined up pretty good with the grid, um, but it's hard to tell because the head shell really throws off the uh, the head shell's crooked. But the cartridge is now straight with the uh, the grid lines. So let's move over here, and I can see right now that we are. Well, we're not far out. We're pretty... Yeah, we're a little bit out. It's hard to see. I can't really see with the camera, so I have to move the camera again and get in there and have a good look. It doesn't look too bad. And I think... I might have to move the cartridge forward by about three or four millimeters. Okay, let me do that. Let's try it on this without. Again, you can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna loosen both screws off. And I'm just gonna slide the whole thing forward. And kind of keep the same angle. I'll just snug this down a little bit so it doesn't walk away on me and then we'll go through and test it again yeah now that's off quite a bit so let me loosen this screw off and just rotate the cartridge a bit and I think that's good Okay, oops, let's try this one now. And that's sitting not too bad. It's a lot better than what it was. So I'm gonna leave it there. I'm sure if I fiddle with it, I could get it perfect, but for demonstration, I think you guys get the idea. I'm just gonna snug these down and we'll put that away. Okay, I'm going to clean this mat. There's a lot of dirt embedded into the grooves here. And you, it's really difficult to get the dirt out. What I use is I use this stuff to spray nine. Now, this stuff is really good for using on rubber like this. Problem is it has uh, chlorides in it. And you don't want to get the chlorides on the aluminum because it will instantly start eating away at it. So, remove the mat. I'm going to take this to the sink. I'm going to spray this down and then scrub it with a brush in line with the grooves and it'll lift all that dirt right out of there give it a couple good rinses and that mat will look like brand new again okay well I seem to have this dialed in now um, I can't hear any uh, variation or in speed with that bent motor shaft I think I got it good enough to the point where it's inaudible inaudible um, got the torn arm set up better than what it was it seems to be tracking pretty good. Um, been playing a few albums, no problems. Everything's good. Um, one thing I don't like is the cueing. When you flip the cueing up, the anti skating pulls the tone arm off to one side. So, and the same when you drop the cueing lever, it doesn't go straight down, it goes out at an angle. It is what it is. So when I go up, it moves over this way. And when I drop it, it continues like it wants to go to the beginning of the album and that's tracking at one gram and I have my anti skating set for one gram as well so everything's done just got to put it together uh, put the bottom on add some screws and uh, this one's ready to go back to the owner I think not much more I can do for it it's a nice turntable it's a uh, very basic manual turntable and it's uh, it's a nice, nice piece of gear. All right, so 
Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you in the next one and take care.